Uh, welcome to Ring in the Week. Uh, this week we're talking about a very important issue which is um, medical marijuana and how it benefits people. And uh, we're talking with Mrs. Curtis who is joining us via Skype. And thank you for, for your time. Um, let's start the conversation. Okay, good morning. Um, so I am using medical marijuana because I have had uh, psoriatic arthritis since I was a child. And psoriatic arthritis, if you don't know, is a, um, an inflammatory disease that affects your joints and sometimes your skin and sometimes your other organs. Um, and I was fairly well controlled with that with traditional medicine for a lot of years, but then over the last 10 years or so, it stopped being so effective for me because I started having a lot of damage in my back. Um, so sorry. Um, anyway, I um, I was really struggling and had to had to stop working as a result of the pain that I was having in my back, and um, then. Around that same period, I moved to Connecticut and got a new rheumatologist who mentioned to me that she was seeing in patients that they were getting the best um, pain relief, not from the usual medications that they had been giving patients for years, but from medical marijuana. Um, and so she suggested that, that I try it, which I did, and within a few weeks I was getting great relief from it. Um, my lab work was much improved. They were noticing that um, my, no, excuse me, the levels of inflammation within my blood was, had dropped significantly, and I went from um, having so much pain in my back that I was having difficulty getting through the day, difficulty walking and getting around, um, to now I can walk most days a, a, an entire mile with my dog and I'm back to doing all pretty much all the same things that I did as you know in years past um, I can do my gardening I can clean the house <laughs> um, I can do various things that I really was having a lot of difficulty doing as a result of using the medical marijuana um, so uh, I've found that, that um, a lot of people don't know a lot about it, including some people in the medical community, um, and that uh, the fact that it's legal in some states but not in others and it's still illegal on a federal level creates a number of challenges for people. Um, probably the biggest one being that because it's not legal on a federal level, insurance companies don't have to have any incentive to cover um, the medic cost of the medication, which can be two to three hundred dollars a month, um, probably more for some people, um, which I'm sure in many, many cases make it prohibitive that it's something that people can't necessarily afford. Um, it's also a problem when you want to go uh, travel across the country. Um, the TSA, for example, does not allow people to bring marijuana on, on airplanes. Um, so you have to make the decision about do you, do you want to take a risk in carrying something that on a federal level is considered illegal in order to continue to have the medication that relieves your pain on a daily basis. Um, and likewise, if you drive to a, from a state where it is legal to a state where it's not legal, should you bring it with you? Or are you taking a big risk of, of um, you know, being uncovered, if you will, by um, by law enforcement and perhaps facing some some very stiff consequences? Um, so that I would personally like to see it legal on a federal level for um, for that reason, and because I think that with lobbying, um, eventually we could get insurance companies to cover the costs for people, um, and. There's many, many people out there who could benefit the same way I have for a variety of diagnoses. Uh, here in Connecticut, where I live, um, I believe there's 23 or 24,000 people who are currently using medical marijuana. Um, and I'm sure in other states there are many more. And there are probably many, many people who don't know about it. But when you can get this kind of pain relief from something like marijuana, it's far preferable to being prescribed opioids um, where you're going to have all kinds of side effects, which I don't have. Um, I don't even get the munchies, which is um, really a nice thing. <laughs> and, uh, you know, with all the problems that we're having in this country with opioid addiction, this just seems like such a sensible alternative. Um, it's just really a shame that it's not available to more people and that we have federal leadership who 
consider it, you know, a moral failing to use marijuana, even when it's something that um, it helps people function and helps people get through the day. Absolutely. Um, I know that uh, here in Georgia, uh, we have passed legislation that makes medical marijuana um, legal for certain people, but there is no way for them to get that. Uh, they, you know, it's not allowed to be bought or transported across state lines, so it virtually does nothing. And listening to the um, Republican gubernatorial uh, debate, runoff debate, uh, they were saying that not enough research has been done about marijuana and its benefits. And I would, uh, I would dispute that. Um, there has been much research done about the benefits of um, oils and uh, marijuana usage, and uh, it is it is beneficial. And if you look at what the alternative is for chronic pain, or uh, you know, for treating uh, things like PTSD and veterans, um, this is a much milder alternative. It's a much more affordable alternative. And think of the revenue that could be created uh, for for states and for our government uh, to serve society. Okay, so absolutely, yeah, it seems like a win-win situation, and you're proof of that. Um, so tell me a little bit about availability to you. How accessible is it to you? Um, there are several licensed dispensaries within the state, and I'm fortunate enough that one, the one I use is only about a 15-minute ride from here. Um, and that um, I, I do believe it was about two years here in Connecticut before um, patients actually had access from the time the legislation was passed on the state level to when all of the ducks were in order, if you will, and people were actually able to go into a dispensary and, and obtain the marijuana for themselves. Um, and I, I used to live in Massachusetts, I believe it was pretty much the same there, that it was two or three years um, between the time it was legalized to when patients could actually um, avail themselves of it. So apparently there's a lot of bureaucracy, I, I assume, mm. that goes into making sure that, you know, that the dispensaries are properly run and um, properly licensed. And even as a patient, uh, I had to be referred by my doctor to a doctor, a specific doctor, and there's only two or three in the state, who was licensed by the state to do that next level of screening and to vouch that the patient does indeed have one of the qualifying diagnoses. Um, for use of medical marijuana, um, insurance doesn't cover that, so that's you know 150 to 200 dollars every year to go visit this doctor and be recertified every year, and then you have to she has to vouch for you with the state, and you have to get actually get a license from the state to be able to enter the dispensary, and that's another hundred dollars a year, and of course those expenses are not covered by insurance, so that's another expense that comes out of the patient's pocket. Um, but, um, you know, as I said, I'm fortunate enough that I don't have to go very far to get it. That's good. Um, I, I think it, it's really crazy that this is even controversial or that this is even an issue. Uh, I can't, um, I, I don't even know what the argument is against uh, using marijuana as a treatment. Um, I have seen no negative effects, but I have seen uh, real life stories of people who are benefiting, you know, children who have seizures who, who benefit from, from medical marijuana, and uh, there are a variety of situations. So um, I'm hoping that uh, our legislators will follow through and see what the majority of people in this nation are demanding and in their districts and follow through to meet the needs of people such as yourself. So um, they, um, I'm grateful that you're getting the relief that you need, um, <laughs> that you found, yeah, you, you found a solution that works for you and you live in a place where it is accessible to you. And I hope that we are able to do that for many more people. Um, thank you for taking the time to talk with us. Uh, our time is up, but hopefully you can uh, come back and uh, maybe in the future tell us more about how things are going for you. And uh, we'd like to stay in touch. Okay, my pleasure. Thank Thanks you. for having me. Thank okay. you. Bye. Bye-bye.